a reading of the New Testament as rendered by the Gullah people. And as usual, we just go to any place. Ooh, here's somebody with a long name. Two Thessalonians. Two Thessalonians three. Well, let me see what two. Let me let me go with let me go to page seven ten. Two two Thessalonians. And uh it starts on page uh seven ten and it ends on seven eleven. So let's do it. Pray for we. Oh, oh, Sorry, I gotta always put the glasses on. I always remember at the last particular moment, like when I'm trying to read, trying to read. Say, I must be a dunderhead. Uh, okay, so because uh, in this uh, rendition here, you have the the um, the New Testament as rendered by uh, you know King James and the and the gang, you know Shakespeare and Christopher Marlowe language right there, and then the Gullah is this right here, and the well, this is smaller. And this, which is appropriate, I, I suppose. I'm just saying it. Uh, chapter 3, 1. We Christian brethren, this the last word, uh, we, what we then say in the letter. Pray for we. Pray that the word be the Lord going spread all over too quickly. And people going to get honor to the Lord and tell him, Taka for ye word, just like what happened when honor ye him. Okay, the translation uh, is, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. Okay, and we usually read this twice. Uh, oh, this right, today is Saturday. Uh, every Saturday I try to explain everything that I'm doing, you know, because usually it's, it's uh, shorter. Uh, so this is uh, the Gullah Bible uh, as uh, rendered, see, the, the New Testament in Gullah. The New Testament in Gullah, right there, right there. New Testament in Gullah from the Sea Island. People that's uh, off the coast of uh, South Carolina, marginal text of the King James Version. It's put out by the American Bible Society. Uh, many people don't know about the Gullah Bible, but it's uh, basically it's my people's on my mother's side. Uh, my grand, my great grandfather was Gullah Geechee. I mean, that was my faith. So I like this because I can always put the thing there and it tells me where I'm going to. Uh, but I started to do this a, a little over a year ago. I can't even remember when I started. Uh, because I wanted to, um, I want to say connect with, but I just felt some way about at, at least addressing the Gullah culture that I come from, you know, because, you know, we have we have what we call lineage memory that goes way beyond, you know, the Gullah and, the, and whatever, way, way back, way through Africa, wherever, wherever, wherever. wherever. And uh, I'm a very big proponent of connecting with your, with your lineage. And so, um, so I started to read this just to have a feel because I feel like, well, I feel like I know that the, the 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 freed people right after slavery, they learned to read and write pretty quick. And uh, what the only thing they had to read really was in, was the uh, the Bible, you know. So uh, the Gullahs, because they were sort of isolated on the thing, um, they well, they never lost their sort of Africanness with their with their language and stuff like that. And so as eventually they put out their own Bible. And so this is a remnant of uh, of my. Uh, of my past, of my lineage, so I've I've been reading every day, to um, well, mostly every day, actually six days a week, uh, Monday through um, Monday through uh, Saturday, and on Saturdays I try to explain everything, explain the set, whatever have you, explain that. On Sundays I do um, I read what's called a Sunday sermon from Mr. Neely Fuller Jr. Well, that doesn't, forget that part. You don't you don't have to be concerned with that. Unless you uh, check out this channel of Sunday Sermon, you get Mr. Lee Fuller Jr.'s wisdom. Okay. So I usually try to explain the set. Uh, here we have, uh, right here you have, uh, um, uh, this is a word from, uh, from uh, I think it's, uh, uh, 
be from from the Akan people. And it means wisdom knot. And that's the wisdom knot right there. That's the symbol right there. I use that as my symbol. Just say, <coughs> I got something caught in my throat. That flag right there that you see, the, the uh, uh, black and red stripes with the uh, green back, the green back and forth, the black uh, stars, that's uh, actually, people think it's, I don't know what they think it is, but it's actually an artistic, it's an, art, an, it's an artist rendering of uh, that was put out uh, by, uh, I think his name was David Hammond. I really wish, I oh, forget that. Uh, David Hammond, so I, I like that. I just like the flag, right? So I, I, I like stanchions. Uh, I got my own stanchion. Okay, let me, you brother used a big word there. Um, then you see this guy here, he's just, it was just a sort of calendar, he, calendar so he, it represents to me uh, a black scholar. This is about the, 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 the turn of this. You know, when the boule started to rise up, let's put it that way, when the boule was 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 uh, sicked on us by, the, <laughs> by, by certain forces, right? But that's, I really like this one. He has certain glasses, and just weird. So I, I look at it as intellectual, like that. And then you have uh, a map. This is a map of Africa um, uh, before the colonizers came and started to carve, colonize, carve up the, uh, the thing right there. Um, up there, oh there, that, this is what I've had. That's um, that's uh, me and this this guy's daughter, right? And I call this the conspirators because she looks like she's with she looks we look like we're in, conspiring to do something. And I really love this picture. This picture here started a whole movement. This Rasta brother here and me because I wear this hat. Let's see, I had wore the hat with Hanan, but. Uh, but then I was, uh, this particular picture, this one right here, I was uh, on my way out, uh, well, I always go through Cape Town, get, get, getting out of South Africa, Southern Africa. Uh, and so it was at, uh, where's that Ganesh? Good place. Uh, and that was all these spiritual things uh, floating around. I uh, was at Ganesh, and it was at nighttime, so I took a, a selfie with my camera, and it, this, the, it just came out so, the two gap tooth brothers, you know, just came out, I, I was affected by it. And I had this, I had, this hat on, right? Because it's a, it's a uh, reversible hat. My wife's a, a designer, so it's a reversible hat. Everybody loves it, you know. Uh, nobody can get it, so I don't know. But because I had that hat, I just started to go around uh, taking selfies with this hat on. I called the African Hat Series. And uh, when I get back to South Africa, because I have a a, a community house that I'm building, and uh, so I want to make up a. Uh, uh, Somehow I'm gonna work this thing to make up a montage, a montage of different uh, different faces that I've on my journey, you know, throughout this part of the world and up in Canada and in the states and and like that. Uh, oh, what else do I have to show you here? Okay. Uh, oh, and like I said, this is this is her father, the one of my really good friends, right? Uh, that's me wearing a wearing a Zulu headdress, which this is the vest. Oh, you can't see it. I should show it to you. This is the vest for that headdress right there. It's on the back of this chair like they got my back. Oh, uh, back there. And that's a, a stitched uh, normal radio stanchion. Uh, standard, whatever you want to call it, flag. That my wife also uh, stitched for me. Uh, and speaking of my wife, this is my wife here. We're in Alice in the Eastern Cape right there. That's us. Um, and now back to, the, back to the Zulu thing. This brother here. Uh, Sikalela, he's a uh, he's unabashedly, you know, whatever Zulu. So he gifted me that the headdress and, and the thing like that. He's, every time I see him, he's always pushing the Zulu line, right? Uh, okay, good. But I I live. It's funny because he now works in the Eastern Cape, which is a stronghold for the close up people. So good luck in pushing the Zulu. <laughs> that was all right. Everybody gets along actually, better than people realize. And that's all I wanted to show you. So anyway, so that's the set. Oh, and uh, I start off. My uh, this uh, kente cloth, kente cloth comes in all kinds of colors and weaves and stuff like that. But I haven't seen this weave. I found it someplace. I found it. Uh, I don't know, a long time ago, thirty years ago. I don't know when it whenever it was. And I've had it since. And I really just like the colors and stuff like that. And oh, on oh, the hat. Okay, I, I have the the hat the cap like this. This is actually my Ogun cap. Uh, when I say my Ogun cap, Ogun's Ogun has certain colors, right? Uh, and it comes, it, it all derives from the uh, Yoruba religion uh, or the Yoruba culture of West Africa, of Nigeria specifically. And Agun's color in Nigeria is blue. And then when 
when uh, when that uh, uh, when that uh, culture went over through slavery and whatever have you went over to Brazil, it became condom bleu, and and the wounds colors became blue and white, right? Interestingly enough, in fact, you know, it seems to me like I gotta a ask this question to somebody. It seems to be like a ghoul is the only one to be changing his colors wherever he's. I guess I don't know why. I gotta ask that question, right? Um, and that then when it came up through Cuba, uh, so so it's kind of like when it came up through Cuba, uh, and eventually to North America, uh, became Santeria, and and the colors for uh, for Ogun and Santeria. And by the way, I'm a child of Ogun. That's why I know all this stuff. Um, his colors are um, a green, black. With a bit of red, so here's the bit of red. This is the green side. Reverse the hat is a, is black, like that. So, so this is my Ogun cap. People think it's something else, but people think what they want. Unless you ask the source, eh, you never know, right? Um, and that's it. So every week I, I read, we we read this twice, and then uh, we move on. I am going to change it, but I'll be traveling a bit. But I think I'm going to change. I do a permanent change. I'm going to because with YouTube I can uh, post stuff. And have them premiere at certain times, right? But I think instead of reading every day, because I don't know what the situation is South Africa is going to be in terms of uh, uh, what do you call that? In terms of uh, because it costs quite a bit of uh, of money <laughs> for the internet. Because South Africa sometimes subsidizes these other places like Nebraska. I won't get into that right now. But um, uh, so it's, it's rather expensive. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm going to post the Gullah readings every Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. Uh, and perhaps uh, Saturdays still do a longer one explaining uh, the whole thing, but we'll see what happens. But for the time being, that's what that's what's in my head now. Hey, the new year is starting. I might have a new revelation. Oh, the budget. Okay, no, we're not doing revelations. We're doing uh, what are we doing here? Uh, Thessalonians. Okay, so we're back to uh, page seven, ten, seven, eleven. This is two Thessalonians three. One. Uh, we Christian brethren, this the last word, what we uh, say in the letter. Pray for we. Pray that the word of the Lord going to spread all over too quickly and people going to get horn up to the Lord and tell um, thank uh, you for you were just like what happened when honor ye um yeah okay and the translation again the uh uh the uh, shakespeare model language uh you know the, the that guy the king james i mean king james sorry make a mess him up with the with the Lan lannisters whatever that for the for the game of thrones anyway um uh, and the, uh, the translation, chapter 3, uh, 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. There it is. A reading from uh, me, T, from the Pattersons, taking the train to Tibet, letting you know what I only suspect uh, from the, from the Gullah culture. <laughs> 